this book review, I'm going to go over a book in, from the Paleontology um, selection that I have. It's relatively new. Sorry for those of you who tune into my channel for the Paleontology content. I haven't posted anything on the subject for a while. The closest thing I have done to that recently was the Verm tabletop role-playing game where you play a character in the Ice Age, but I don't think many of you, I think many of you won't think that would count. But this one is strictly on dinosaurs, and as a story of dinosaurs in 25 discoveries by Donald R. Prothero. Now, Prothero is a, um, as a paleontologist who very much knows the subject, who ends now to various um, fields in paleontology. Now, um, he's written two other books in this format, The Story of Life in 25 Fossils and The Story of Earth in 25 Rocks. And so, for those of you familiar with those, he does a similar format here with dinosaurs. And this one is where it has 25 chapters, each one dealing with the dinosaur, and he talks about the dinosaur, but more importantly, the stories around it, who, the people who discovered it, what they go through, um, what they had to go, uh, what were their lives like before and, you know, during and even sometimes at the end of their um, lives, and what they had to suffer through or, you know, and go through just to find these and other, and other fossils and all that. Um, these are hard, um, hard, uh, determined individuals. It, pretty much illustrates what he describes in the beginning of the book, the two types of people who go out into the fields to find, you know, to discover, you know, fossils. The rich and dedicated and the poor and dedicated. So, so each chapter here talks about the dinosaur, you know, talks about the people around it, talks about um, what they thought about the dinosaur then and what they know, what we know about it now, you know, at least up to the point of this writing. And he also goes at the end of the chapter, you know, and if he doesn't talk about the dinosaur, what we know about now, he also goes through a related note of, um, with this, um, what they know about uh, dinosaurs or what's happening. For instance, um, in the part where he talks about one of the predatory dinosaurs here, um, like again, Tosaurus, he talks about the distribution of different types of uh, related predators in different parts of the world at the time. Tyrannosaurs in, in Asia and North America or Allosaurus types, you know, in Africa or South America, you know, stuff like that. Um, some of the more serious um, notes, like T-Rex, you know, he talks about T-Rex and discoveries about that and what we know, but at the end of it, he talks about um, how they're, the problem with poachers, because um, about people who come in, search for fossils, um, and then, you know, and mostly illegally, and tries to sell it in the auctions to whoever, sell to the highest bidder, and unfortunately destroying the science in the process of this. And this, of course, he really, you know, the reason why he brings it up again in Tyrannosaurus is because of the famous T-Rex named Sue, and all the controversies about who owned the fossil, uh, uh, who discovered it. But, um, or you could talk about um, related species, like you go to Cryolophosaurus, which is a dinosaur found in Antarctica, and, you know, he talks about related species like Dilophosaurus and how popular culture um, views about that. So it almost sounds you know off subject in each chapter, but they are related to some note. But you know, if about that, you read about the individuals. Um, what's fascinating about this book is reading about the individuals who discovered these dinosaurs and what their lives were like. You get to read about you know some of these you've heard before, some of you've never heard of before. But um, like if you hear about William Buckland, Gideon Mantle. Um, Richard Owen, O.C. March, E.D. Cope, Henry Fairfield, Osborne, Andrew Carnegie, Roy Chapman, Andrew, Eric Stromer, um, Baron Franz Nopschka, Walter Granger, Jose Bonaparte, Barnum Brown, John Ostrom, the Sternberg family, and many others. And, you know, and, and some, a lot of these I'm already familiar with. Some of these I've never even heard of, but um, Jose Bonaparte I'm not familiar with because I don't know much about South American um, paleontology, but he was the main guy who discovered a lot of what is known of, of South American uh, dinosaurs. And, you know, um, Walter Granger, you may not be familiar with him, but for those of you who know Roy Chapman Andrew, you think if he was, he was a paleontologist behind the Mongolian, ex, um, Mongolian expedition in the 1920s and 30s, um, well, he was a leading expedition, but he wasn't a paleontologist. That was Walter Granger. Many, uh, many you also know about um, you know, Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, the two guys famous for the, um, the Bone Wars, um, which involved these two, these two's opposition against each other to try and find and, and name as many um, fossils and dinosaurs in particular that they can to outcompete each other. And you'll find many of these people would be very interesting to know. Some of them you don't want anything to deal with, but and there is a few people in between, but they all contributed greatly to paleontology through its history and through their discoveries. You, you know, so you you see these people and you understand, and, um, you get to find out where they came from. Um, they are not perfect people. 
but some of them are definitely larger than life. For instance, Barnum Brown, the guy who discovered T. Rex and you know and others, you know he went all over the world and you know his exploits, is, you know it's kind of a uh, amazing you know you find it, you only hear about that most of the time in fiction, um, if it was way over the top that is. But um, then there's uh, Baron Franz Nopchka, another interesting um, larger than life character. Baron Franz, no Franz Nopchka was a, a baron from Romania. You, you think Romania, you think Dracula. No, well, paleontology, we got this guy. And he was a baron who, had, um, <laughs> his exploits outside paleontology are also pretty extraordinary. And he goes over that. But he, he was a passionate individual in paleontology. And his ideas at the time, you know, were later, you know, he was ahead of his time, you know, in thought, like the relationship between dinosaurs and birds, and which we accept today. Um, of course, William Buckland, who discovered megalosaurs, you got Gideon Mantle, who discovered Iguanodon. Um, Andrew Carnegie, he was a very, you know, very rich man. At the, uh, according to Prothero's book, at one time, you know, uh, with Andrew Carnegie, he was probably pretty much the richest man in the world in the early um, 1900s, and through his contributions of uh, particular Diplodocus. So, and then you got Sternberg family. This is a family who is, you know, who goes out into the field and finds where fossils they can and tries to sell them to, um, this was uh, to um, museums and such. They didn't sell it to any um, rich individuals. You could tell, um, and I agree with Prothero. You could tell Prothero has contempt for those who um, sell fossils just to have in their private homes because that destroys a lot of the science we can learn from them. But there is a, a whole bunch of interesting characters, you know, um, from good to bad to a mixture between all of them, you know, are, you see the dedication of um, not only of what they had to rough through throughout all over the world, from Asia, Europe, Africa, the United States, of course, and even Antarctica. In fact, the chapter is interesting of what one has to go through to go to Antarctica and all the training they have to do and, and the people involved in you know, just going to Africa and do whatever they need to do there, and the paleontologists involved in how they had to go in search of fossils in there. So it's not just the, but it's not just their lives and how they go about enduring the environment to search for these fossils, and also you, there's some, you know, happy endings and so even some tragedies about you know, how it affects their health and family life just to achieve what they're passionate about. So that's the thing, that's what I take from this is the, you know, all the interesting characters about the dinos about the people who discovered the dinosaurs and said each chapter mm -hmm. and about you know the um and the side notes that um it uh, that prothero gives at the end about um despite the history how they have what do we think about these dinosaurs and now so um each chapter is wonderful um is a good pick of all the fossils that you may will be interested in and at the end of each chapter he gives further reading these are not scientific journals you know they're technical about that no these are straight up of other books you could read about that could read further into these characters or further into um, the subject about these particular dinosaurs so there you go the story of dinosaurs and 25 discoveries amazing fossils that people found them by donald r prothero check this out if you're a paleontology aficionado or just a regular lay person that wants to have a something that's not technical or anything and it doesn't want but it's not a kid's book this is a good book for you so thank you all for watching you have a nice day